Hiya, I'm back at it again. This is a short video aimed at extolling the virtues and demonstrating the setup of HP SDR's newest feature, Pure Signal, or to the uninitiated, that's pre-distortion. Now without going into the depths of technicalities, one of the measurements of the cleanliness of a transmitter is IMD, intermodulation distortion product. When you mix two frequencies together, as you well know, you end up with the originals plus also multiples of mixtures of those two frequencies together, intermodulation. And in any radio transmitter, the worse the intermodulation distortion products are, the harsher the transmitter will sound and the more interference that it can cause to your immediate neighbours. And anyone who has a, a spectrum display or spectrum adapter with their radio is fully aware of the devastation that a, a poor audio chain and high IND products can cause to other people on the bands. So without further ado, uh, we'll have a quick look at the physical setup for the pure signal, pre-distortion, and this relates specifically to the Anan 100, Apache Labs Anan 100 transceivers, although pure signal does work with Power SDR MRX uh, PS in HPSDR format transceivers, this particular video is aimed at the uh, Anand transceivers and, and for the owners of those transceivers. So we'll take a quick look at the physical setup for pre-distortion in the Anand 100 radios. This is the Apache Labs Anand 100D HPSDR transceiver, which I'm going to demonstrate pure signal with. Now. The Anand 100 transceivers do have enough internal crosstalk to be able to use the pure signal feature without any external connections. However, it is possible with pure signal pre-distortion to linearize your entire transmit chain, including any PAs you may have subsequently, uh, including your kilowatt amplifiers, etc. Now, in order to do that, we must be able to get a clean signal from your output chain back into the radio for processing. So, we'll just do a, a quick squeeze here. Now what we have, the back of the radio, there's enough room to do it. There, are, I've made it simple and there are only two connections here currently. There is the output from antenna one and the input which goes back into external one for the monitoring of the pre-distortion. In order to be able to connect the output chain of your transmitter, we need a directional coupler. And so what we have is the output goes from antenna one, it comes around here and goes into the input of the directional coupler in in this particular instance, I'm running to a dummy load, so the output of my directional coupler is going into uh, a dummy load here. The output port from the directional coupler, the forward port, then goes back into the rear of the radio. And that is it as far as the physical setup of the radio is concerned for using uh, pure signal. It really is as simple as that. In order to take advantage of pure signal, it is necessary to A, have an HP SDR architecture transceiver, and B, to be running a pure signal version of Power SDR, Power SDR Open HP SDR MRX. PS for pure signal, which was introduced in version 328, I believe. However, it's always beneficial to use the most recently available version to benefit from bug fixes and enhancements. 
the pure signal form, the uh, dialogue if you like, is available through this menu item linearity. And as you can see, there is a prominent message pure signal is disabled in setup. Now, the console that you are looking at here is essentially a clean database. I have uh, done a database reset for the purpose of making this video so that uh, everything is set to stock. So we need to make some changes in PowerSDR setup. So if we go to PowerSDR setup, the first thing that I need to draw your attention to is that at the current time, until the gigabit firmware is released, it is only possible to use pure signal up to the sample rate of 192k. It doesn't at the time being operate at 384, only at 192 or below. So we need to make sure that uh, if you have been using PowerSDR at above 192 and you wish to use pure signal, you must put it back to 192 or less. On the main general hardware configuration tab for PowerSDR, you'll see at the bottom here, pure signal, and a checkbox disable pure signal. Now as it stands, the stitched multiple stitched receivers capability and pure signal are mutually exclusive of each other. It is not possible to have multiple receivers and run pure signal. So if I check to enable or to uh, remove the disable flag from pure signal, as you can see, automatically the one receiver checkbox is checked here. The only other feature that is of a particular importance at this stage, uh, the, the setting, the uh, attenuation on TX, we want to make sure that it is set at maximum attenuation, which is 31 dB in this instance. And as this video pertains to the using of a directional coupler, we are feeding the signal from our transmit chain back into the radio utilizing external one. And so check the external one on TX checkbox. And that is it. No other settings need be made in order to benefit from pure signal. It is as simple as that. So let's move along and demonstrate pure signal in operation. I've chosen six meters to do this particular test. So, as you can see, the message in the pure signal uh, form has now uh, disappeared to say that it is disabled. Therefore, we are ready to proceed. It's not uncommon for people to run a drive level of around half for running into linear amplifiers, etc. As, uh, of course, it is uh, a beneficial to run within the linear portion of the uh, your, your transmit output and of course it is a fairly common value to drive a linear amplifier so we will uh, proceed on that basis that we are pretending that we're also driving a linear amplifier in the TX chain. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to actually set up the, this radio to transmit with a forward power of 50 watts. So I go to tune, that's 52. Let's just bring that down a touch to 50. And that gives me a drive level of 36, which is here. So to make sure that we don't exceed our 50 watts limit that we have set ourselves, we pop the radio into MOX and also adjust the drive level to 36 as per the tune cycle just a moment ago. N now all that is left to do is to run the two-tone generator and see the effects of our handiwork. And, well, oh goodness gracious me, we have ourselves a wonderful display 
of intermodulation distortion products. However, we can't see the top of our fundamentals, so we need to make a slight adjustment to be able to see the full range of the fundamentals and the IMD. Now what we can do is, with our right mouse button, click on the display levels on the left hand side and drag them down. Let's try that and see whether or not it gives us the full dynamic range we need. It does indeed, in fact we can actually push that up another notch back to 5, 10, let's go to 0, let's try that. Right, that gives us a good uh, display of the IMD uh, and the fundamentals. Now, it would be very difficult to take a precise measurement of the improvements to be had from enabling the uh, pure signal. Um, we can do a rough level by taking a cursor check here and say, OK, if you look at the left-hand side of the screen, here you will see the, the numbers and you can get up an approximate level there a 4.5 dBm and another approximate level there of minus 23 uh, which gives us around 29 or so but it's imprecise and what I'll do in a moment is run a spectrum analyzer to demonstrate uh, and precisely measure the benefit of implementing the, the PR signal and all that's left is to adjust the transmit attenuator. So, two-tone generator, we need to enable pure signal, auto calibrate, and as you will see already, immediately the IMD products have dropped down considerably. But we have this feedback level square here that is flashing red at us, which indicates that we have not quite managed to reach the uh, the appropriate levels for optimum performance. So we begin to adjust the S attenuator down through. As you can see now it's gone from red to amber and if I do a few more dBs it will change to green. Now we have a feedback level that is in the green and this is the optimum level, feedback level to uh, obtain the best possible results from the uh, pure signal algorithm. Now before we drop the PTT we need to take a note of the value here in this S attenuator box 23. The reason we need to do this is we need to input that into the setup box and then that will be remembered in the future when we come back to this band. So it was 23 there, so we go back to the uh, general antenna filters tab antenna and to this box attenuate uh, on TX the degree of attenuation here and adjust that to our minus 23. If we don't do that, the next time we PTT the, uh, the uh, attenuation on transmit will come back at minus 31 again which of course is no help to us if we want to uh, continue transmitting benefiting from pure signal so we'll just double check we do another two-tone generation and we see that uh, we are our feedback level is in the green and our uh, S attenuator has come back at the correct level and as you can see a significant change in IMD and uh, just to prove, if I turn it off, up goes the IMD levels, put it back on, and down they go again. All that is left for us to do now is to take an objective measurement of the benefits to be had from implementing the uh, pure signal algorithm. So I'll turn the auto calibrate off and bring up the spectrum analyzer and uh, if I hit the two-tone generator again we will see that we have ourselves uh, a display so we want to uh, peak search and that's good we found ourselves on the left hand side which is the one that I like 
marker to center frequency and marker to reference level that gives us the best dynamic range of uh, our display now I want to enable the delta feature so I need to find the peak of the third order oh that was a lucky shot as it stands at the moment uh, I seem to be uh, experiencing a third order uh, in intermodulation of uh, minus 40 dB which is surprised me a little, it's usually a little bit less than that but uh, we can live with it uh, so now all that we need to do is to see that uh, the level is at m roughly minus 40 with the pure signal disabled enable the pure signal and wham that's gone down yet uh, another 16, 17 decibels. The typical range of improvement that tends to be had is that uh, IMD levels typically around 30 dB on most bands and the pure signal improves that. Uh, users are finding uh, to somewhere between 48 to 60 dB um, IMD uh, resultant IMD, that's not 60 dB improvement but uh, but minus uh, 45 to minus 60 dB overall which of course places the IMD uh, transmitter figures as a world leader uh, as far as uh, IMD figures go in amateur radio transceivers so I turn it off and as you can see the level has gone up back up to minus 40 re-enable and the IMD figures have uh, improved substantially well, that pretty much covers this video I'll try to do uh, another video, a substantially shorter one which will demonstrate the improvements to be had in phone transmission uh, using the pure signal algorithm I can confirm that there is definitely an audible improvement in the quality of your transmitted audio when using pure signal especially if you have a tendency to maybe drive your audio chain a little bit on the hard side so that's it for pure signal thank you very much for your time I hope that the video will prove uh, beneficial to you uh, help you understand uh, the implementation of pure signal uh, better and how simple it is in reality to set it up and get it running on your system. So, seven threes, we'll catch you further down the log.